Hi, this is Mohamed Sorkat and Manos Brilakis presenting case 178 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case illustrating some of the difficulties treating undilatable lesions that are within a previously placed stand. The patient was a woman who presented with chest discomfort. She had previous mechanical AVR, previous bypass with three grafts and uh, a reduced ejection fraction of 35%, as well as gastric bypass surgery. She had stable hemodynamics and was sent for right and left catheterization. She did have normal right atrial and wedge pressure of 2 and 4 respectively, and normal cardiac index. And this is a coronary angiogram showing occlusion of the lima to the LAD. The native RCA has diffuse disease and multiple previous stents. There is a patent bypass going to the diagonal branch that is distal uh, to a stent in this diagonal branch. And there's also a patent, a patent radial graft going to the distal right coronary artery. However, in the LAD, there was a severe lesion in the mid LAD at the bifurcation of the diagonal branch that had been occluded. And this seemed to be the culprit lesion for the patient's symptoms. We had some difficulty with engagement. Eventually, we used a JL4 in, the, in exchange for an EBU. And uh, this is the next step. We tried to predilate with uh, a non-compliant balloon, inflated at fairly high pressures at 26 atmospheres. However, there was still a waste within the balloon. And this is intravascular ultrasound. There are areas of under-expansion within the previous stent. The stent more proximally seems to be well expanded. So what to do? This is an instant balloon and dilatable lesion. And the first step, which we already did in this case, is to try high pressure non-compliant balloon inflation. That did not work. Another option would be to try a plaque modification balloon like the NGO Sculpt, Scoreflex, Chocolate and Cutting balloon. Or go to intravascular lithotripsy, although the IVL is not formally approved for this indication. If that doesn't work, then we can escalate to the very high pressure balloon, the OPN balloon, that can go up to 40 or 50 atmospheres. If it doesn't work, we can do laser with contrast. And then there's the option of doing a therectomy within the prior stand, which, however, is a high risk procedure. Or if everything fails, go outside the previous stand, cross the stand, and then stand again. And if all of this fails, then coronary bypass may be another way to take care of the problem. So we did intravascular lithotripsy and we gave 100 pulses in this area. However, the balloon burst and still we do have the same waste in the balloon. So what to do? The next step, we decided to do the very high pressure balloon. Um, this is best done by using a non-coating balloon. So we used a Grand Slam wire. And ideally, one wants to have a second wire because going at this high pressure, sometimes what it may do is make the balloon get stuck with the wire, necessitating removal of the wire. We did use a six French uh, liquid guide extension who has extra large internal diameter and allows easy delivery of equipment. So this is the OPN balloon. We went up to 50 atmospheres, and although it looks a little better, unfortunately, there still seems to be some waste in the balloon. So what to do next? We were getting ready of doing uh, actually laser with contrast. However, we decided to try with a plaque modification balloon, which we had not done before. So this is a Scoreflex 3.0 by 15 millimeter Scoreflex. And to our surprise, the Scoreflex actually seemed to expand fairly well. And uh, we did intravascular ultrasound, went into placing an additional stent. And then this is uh, the intravascular ultrasound after we performed the second stent. And there is much better expansion of the stent. There's still an area that is not perfectly expanded within the stent. And this measured 5.3 millimeters square. We would like to get it a little higher. However, significant improvement compared with the baseline. And this was the final result, showing a fairly... Um, much improved uh, flow through the LAD and much less stenosis in that main segment. So algorithmic approach is critical for instant and dilatable lesions, high-pressure balloons, plaque modification balloons, IVL, 
high, very high pressure balloon, laser, etc. In this case, those steps, the high pressure balloon, the plaque modification, IVL, and the OPL balloon were sufficient for expanding this balloon dilatable lesion. So following an algorithmic approach using the tools that are available and uh, performing intracoronary imaging to determine the response to treatment are important for every complex lesion, especially those that are heavily calcified and especially those that are balloon undilatable. Thank you.